This week's edition of NJBIA's Minding Your Business is brought to you in part by AT&T, helping family, friends, and neighbors connect in meaningful ways every day. From the first phone call 140 years ago to mobile video streaming today, AT&T innovates to improve lives. And by New Jersey Business Magazine, providing the critical information needs for New Jersey's business community for more than 65 years. Welcome to NJBIA's Minding Your Business. I'm your host, Bob Considine. Well, NJBIA is hosting its first Diversity and Inclusion Summit, a virtual two-day event called Stronger Together. Taking a part in this very important event on March 31st and Thursday, April 1st, our keynote speakers, Tanuja Dene, President and CEO of the Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation, and Dr. Ebby Parsons III, Founder and Managing Partner of Yardstick Management. The event will also feature critical breakout sessions on the many key topics around diversity and inclusion in the workplace with some 20 thought-provoking panelists. Ahead of the summit, we hear from some of those panelists on why advancing D&I policies in the workplace are important for both employer and employee. Let's give a look and a listen. Many corporations are grappling with the idea of how to measure diversity, equity, inclusion in ways that I think is very challenging for many because the idea of measurement, you can measure distance, you can measure miles, but how do you measure humanity and dignity and respect for individuals and how they share it with each other and how they share space? But one of the things I found to be very important is that you take inventory, ask the critical questions, ask about belonging, ask about value in the workspace. When people feel that they are included and there is the inclusion in the atmosphere, you notice things. People feel that they can succeed and they can thrive. And all types of people feel that way. When it comes to diversity, when you ask questions about where people are from, their backgrounds, their lived and learned experiences, you begin to understand who's in the room, who's in the workplace. So you have to ask the questions. You can't make assumptions. And when you talk about equity, it's not equality. And I think people get a, hooked up on understanding the difference between the two. And equity is really looking at, does everyone in this workspace have what they need and what is necessary for them to exceed? Not that just everyone has pin and, and has a workspace because all things equal, it doesn't mean that they feel that they can still thrive and they have what's necessary to help each of them do their jobs in the way that they can perform at high standards. And so equity is really about meeting people where they are and understanding individual needs. And when people can tell you, I know you gave us this, but I'm going to need a little extra help here. Those are the things that you have to pay attention to. So measuring is about asking those critical questions, taking inventory and making no assumptions having open lines of communication where folks can talk to you and share to you about what they feel and how things are working for them in the workplace. So there are a few different ways that you can measure diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace. And generally you can look at it from a qualitative perspective and a quantitative perspective. So if you're thinking about it from a qualitative perspective, you think about the information you get from employee surveys and from questionnaires or from conversations in town hall meetings and or one of the most common trends and effective trends right now is also through through listening sessions, really listening to your employees talk about these topics. Um, another way where you can get uh, information about how to measure DEI within your workplace is through more quantitative measurements and that would really be looking at your data. So collecting data and then analyzing your data to see, for example, what is your workforce composition? What is your vendor composition? What is your management composition? And, and when I say composition, I'm referring to the composition of people within your organization based on their gender, based on their gender identity, based on their race, based on their age, based on whether or not they have any disabilities. So those are, those are generally two of the ways that you would really assess and measure the DEI within your workplace. 
At PSEG, we measure diversity, equity, and inclusion as a compensable metric that we track on our internal corporate scorecard called the DEI index. This metric measures DEI improvements in four categories. First, increasing diverse representation and management with a focus on women and people of color. Second, diversity representation in our union workforce with a focus on improving the percentage of women in union roles. Third, we have an employee experience survey that we use to ensure that senior leaders are hearing the voice of the employees directly. And lastly, we have a grassroots effort that we call the Acts of Inclusion Program. This is a uh, program that's designed to engage the workforce throughout the enterprise and across all five states in which we operate to complete 200 collective meaningful acts of inclusion for each other. The acts of inclusion are qualify as peer-to-peer -peer mentoring opportunities, um, opportunities to showcase or celebrate diversity uh, of culture within the different locations that employees gather and work, um, and creating peer-to-peer -peer employee recognition for one another. Lastly, it also uh, showcases and highlights opportunities for employees to volunteer in the communities in which they live and work. The way that we um, uh, measure diversity and inclusion is one, by looking around <laughs> and we say, okay, let's look at our census. Um, are we overrepresented in any particular area? And how does that uh, inform our decisions? I think that's a, a really important uh, point for us is to, to analyze how we're running the organization, everything down from um, you know, the types of perks that we have to the types of, you know, food that we're serving and also to the types of clients that we have. Um, is it, is there an equitable distribution of experience across our staff? We also, um, uh, al we also do um, quarterly 360 reviews, which then are anonymous. It's through 360score.me and um, we measure the experience of all of our staff um, in a very intentional way, asking about everything about their experiences um, working in our organization. And we would prioritize review of that on a quarterly basis. Uh, we also hold our leaders accountable to um, those met to, you know, that um, prioritization of reviewing those reviews. And um, we do skip level meetings uh, with staff as well to make sure that everything is in line with our goals. This is probably the most challenging metric, yet the most rewarding. Each organization is different and aligning to your goals, to your strategy will help. You know, there's multiple ways you can measure using surveys within your own organization. Voice of customer is so important or even having quantitative goals. For example, I plan to, we plan to promote 50% of women into leadership positions in X amount of years or hiring 15% more people of color. There are many options, but most important is to align your strategy and do your research, understand your current landscape. I do feel there is recognition and appreciation to diversity and inclusion goals, um, I mean, the efforts. Um, and many large corporations have established their internal measures and uh, uh, metrics. But I feel there is still a long way to go um, in terms of, uh, you know, putting it into practice by engaging the employees um, and, you know, making them accountable to make those actions. Uh, so the organizations, you know, I see a, they either do not know what the next steps are, uh, what actions to be taken or what goals measures have to be monitored. Uh, I think they lack the tools um, and resources uh, on how to take the action uh, and also how to measure their uh, DNI uh, efforts. So organizing awareness around events um, or sharing news uh, and articles around diversity and inclusion uh, is not really a real value creation for me. I think the employers have to learn to establish First of all, establish a process to uh, increase the awareness within the organization 
and then to engage all the employees, especially the leadership has to be made accountable to follow the, these practices to uh, increase diversity and inclusion within their organization. Concerning where employers are in recognizing the value of diversity and inclusion, or do we have a long way to go? My answer is yes, and yes, employers are recognizing the value, and we have a long way to go. So I'm going to quote our diversity inclusion vice president at Panasonic. And one of the first statements she made was, this is not, it's a journey, it's not a sprint. You know, this is going to be an evolving recognition. There's never going to be a perfect plan. Many more employers are taking this step in the right direction and noticing the importance of DNI. But again, this is changing, it's evolving. We're learning new techniques um, and we just have to stay float and keep learning and recognizing. In today's workplace, I think one of the questions that we have to ask ourselves, are you inclusive enough to be diverse? And I think what's happening right now there is a demand for employers to be more intentional about the work that they're doing, to value and to respect diversity, equity, and inclusion. And people have been in this work and businesses have been doing this work for decades. When diversity came on the scene in the 1990s, people didn't understand quite what it was about. It was evolving from equal employment opportunities to really looking at how do we get more people, different people into our workspace? And then how do we utilize their talents, expertise, and skills? So this idea of now getting people more, paying more attention to uh, diversity and equity inclusion workplace, many have already done that. There's a business case for it. It's in, in many times it's rooted in litigation and the ability to stay um, and keep employees and maintain a, a solid reputation with your company. Because when people walked out, they walked out and told their stories to others. And so reputations were on the line. I think that companies now are being more intentional, more deliberate about what it takes to be a organization that understands equity, that understands diversity, that understands inclusion. So educational programs are in place. And what has been missing for some time is the idea of understanding the intersections and spotlighting the intersections of diversity and social justice. And now with what we're experiencing in our society today, another reckoning with racial injustice has caused people to think about that there are intersections, that they're not separate things, and that people can't leave their identities and who they are at the door. They bring them into the workspace. I think that recently we've taken, um, maybe in the last three or four years, we've taken significant steps toward awareness of diversity and inclusion. I do believe that we have a very long way to go. Um, I'm in the IT industry, which has um, been historically predominantly male. And so as an Asian female, I have felt um, the need for awareness and mindfulness and intentionality with diversity and inclusion for my entire career. Um, I think that uh, it, if now that we are having the dialogue and taking time to identify and acknowledge where the issues are, I think that's a very important step in formulating solutions. I think before it was just so under the surface that people didn't really, uh, weren't aware of the biases and um, the racism that was just pervasive in our um, society. And I think that um, we can't undo all of that in a matter of a year. I think that it's going to be a constant dialogue and evolution for us. But I am very excited about the direction that we're going in and um, just acknowledging it and having dialogue. I think that is the first step toward healing. You're watching Mind of Your Business, previewing NJBIA's Diversity and Inclusion two-day summit called Stronger Together. We'll be back right after this. You're first. First to respond. First to put others' lives before your own. And in an emergency, you need a network that puts you first, that connects you to technology and each other. 
that's built with and for first responders. FirstNet, the only officially authorized wireless network for first responders. Because putting you first is our job. Welcome back to NJBIA's Mind of Your Business. I'm Bob Considine. We return you now to the panelists from NJBIA's upcoming Diversity and Inclusion Summit called Stronger Together. Have a look and a listen. One of the best first steps an organization can take when they are looking to create a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment is to come up with and create a thoughtful DEI plan for their organization with accountability and with measurables. Because we all know that what gets measured gets managed. So this needs to be something, this needs to be a project, a priority like any other within our organization that gets measured so that it will get managed. And along those lines, you'll want to make sure that you have a leader for that committee or for that program and that you have an active and involved um, committee who will execute on the measurables that are determined um, during the creation of that committee. And so that you'll not only come up with initiatives, but that you will execute on those initiatives. And, and along the way, it's really important that the organization really get buy-in, get ownership and empower the rest of the workplace to participate in this important goal of the organization. I think it's back to my earlier statement. It's do your research and then set your goals. Talk to your employees, listen and absorb, see what other organizations are doing, know your problem areas, ensure leaders of the organization are leading by example and communicating the importance of DEI. ERGs, ERGs are becoming more and more important to help employees have a voice and leadership needs to ensure that they're standing behind them and ensuring their employees understand the importance of them. Use a consultant to help assess your current landscape. You know, it's kind of the common themes. And it's important to connect with your employees and understand why you want to implement DE&I initiatives. You know, you just don't want to do it. There's a reason why you need to do it. For businesses and employers who still have a long way to go, my recognition as a best first step towards building a more diverse and inclusive workforce is to build a strategy. Building a strategy is both a time and financial commitment for senior leadership within the organization, whether it's a sole proprietorship, small business, or Fortune 500. Obviously, the more time and the more money that an organization has, the more the organization will be able to tackle in a shorter period of time. But the best first step is to begin with an honest acknowledgement of where you are right now as an organization and then develop a clear direction as to where you want to be. Two things. I would say have conversations with leadership. I think that in order to address and sort of promote diversity and inclusion in your organizations, the leaders have to have buy-in. So start by holding workshops, um, have uh, programs that I will provide education and uh, coping tools, um, learn how to take and receive feedback um, and in a way that is productive and healthy because in uh, with diversity and inclusion, the reason why we have it in the first place is that it was widely ignored and not valued. So a lot of leaders, not a lot of leaders, but I would say we are here today because leadership has realized there's a huge value in diversity and inclusion and it's necessary. In terms of um, actual tangible changes that you can make, start with hiring. Um, I learned something today very that was very interesting that where you, where a lot of organizations are now um, looking at resumes um, with through their HR department, through a separate department um, that uh, where the uh, position is not being held, and then. Um, then that will sort of object, not, um, make it more objective in terms of not uh, buying into any unconscious bias with resumes and things like that. 
um, and then being able to pass that on to the actual department after they've been vetted um, with diversity and inclusion in mind, and then going that next step to um, hold those um, managers accountable to their decisions. Um, also doing constant studies and uh, measuring of data in terms of where your promotions and salaries uh, are in relation to your census. I think that's a very important point as well. I think the employers have to clearly communicate their DNI goals and metrics to the entire organization, so both the internal and external stakeholders. And employees have to be engaged in these initiatives. Uh, we need to provide the level of awareness and tools, resources to our employees uh, to engage them into these initiatives. So, so they also feel that they belong uh, to this initiative and they're playing a great role. So the leadership also has to practice uh, the, these what we preach, right? Because if they embrace these values into their day-to-day -day work, uh, work life, the teams that are in their groups are going to be inspired and motivated and they also follow similar culture. It's, it's almost like establishing a DNI, establishing DNI within the culture of the organization. So we need to move from preaching to practice. Uh, the focus on promoting the awareness, uh, again, as I said, in, through events and discussions uh, is not really going to show any immediate value. But I think the most important thing is to uh, have that level of education, find the tools and resources so we have a complete engagement internally and externally in these initiatives so we start to see some good results. What do I think the value is? Is it invaluable? I think that um, diversity, I, if you have a homogenous group of people making decisions and working toward a goal, your decisions and product and goals are going to be what informed from only one perspective and so in order to uh, serve the community serve whatever it is that your product is um, to do it well you're going to need to be inclusive of the your clients experience or whomever's experience so uh, diversity and inclusion in our organization has led to higher collaboration um, better informed decisions that are creative, dynamic, um, and well advised. Um, if you have a room full of, for instance, um, white men making decisions, they're only going to make decisions based on their experiences, education, backgrounds. Um, there may, there's obviously going to be blind spots because everyone's human and will see things through their own lens. So if you fill a room with diverse people, you will get diverse decisions and di diverse input, which is exactly what we need. One of the clearest examples, I think, is if you think of where the, um, the gaming industry was, the electronic gaming industry was a number of years ago. And I saw it in my own home because I have a daughter and son about the same age. And my son was enthralled, as were all of his male friends, with video games, whereas my daughter wasn't. And Five, 10 years ago, there weren't many female programmers hired by these organizations. And so the way I looked at it as a business person is they were missing out on 50% of potential clients because it was mostly boys, males who were interested in video gaming and not girls because the games were being created by the majority of creators who were male and they were, they were gearing their games towards male interests, whereas if they diversified their workplace and brought in more female programmers and game creators, they could capture an additional 50% of the market. And I know that's changed over time, as it should, because otherwise you're losing out on 50% of your potential market and customer base. So that's just one clear example of how diversity can really help an organ organization. When workplaces have the opportunity to make sure that everyone can thrive and everyone has psychological safety, meaning that they can be in that space to contribute, to challenge, to grow, and to learn from each other. That is something that helps each individual bring them, their whole self to the table. They are more inclined to give it their all, their best.
And when they are respected for who they are, their lived and learned experiences, people don't have to mask who they are. They don't have to hold back. They don't have to limit their ideas and their thinking around creativity because they know it's valued and respected. Organizational culture is shaped by those who inhabit that space. So if individuals are willing to give it their all, they begin to shape a culture of values that all employees can uphold. There must be some vulnerability. There has to be courage. People have to have curiosity, and there has to be some sense of allyship across cultural lines, across uh, different departments, across different levels within the organization. And people must feel comfortable holding not just others accountable, but holding themselves accountable. See, the globalization has flattened the world. We are operating cross borders, cross cultures. The recent statistics from various studies indicate that most of the young uh, and ambitious professionals are often uh, are more attracted to companies that uh, have that they have a priority of diversity and inclusion as part of their overall strategy. In fact, according to an, a, another study, over 50% of job seekers say it is very Im important for them to work at a company that respects diversity and considers diversity and inclusion as their priority. But by doing so, this can result in a more motivated and efficient workforce, which ultimately uh, gives a higher productivity and profitability to the company. According to a McKinsey report, uh, companies with the executive leaders that promote uh, the ethnic, racial, cultural, and gender diversity are 33% more likely to have industry-leading profitability. So we can see a lot, lot of uh, benefit around productivity as well as profitability. Doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. We are not an insane society. Either we, but rather we are a body of people who can and will reason together Concerning building the value of a diverse workforce, research, research data and personal testimonies tell us that a diverse and inclusive workplace increases productivity through innovation. Different perspectives, working on teams to resolve business problems produces new and innovative ways towards profitability and productivity. Companies who commit to diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies are invested in innovation and proved to be the most agile in an ever-changing global market. Companies can't do this alone. They need to seek out support and help from professionals and people who are doing this work full time. Many companies don't have the resources or the budgets to really talk about measures and to talk about how to assess their organizational needs. And so that's one of the reasons why I do what I do in terms of providing consulting services to help companies do that. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to reach out and build relationships outside of the organization that can help inform your thinking. The world around us needs to change. The places we work need to change and it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. We've learned this year and last that there is a significant need for DEI initiatives, especially equity. And it starts with training, communication, and awareness. Events like this are crucial to learn what others are doing and what type of new insights you can bring back to your own organization. Education is key, and you will get tons of knowledge and awareness at our upcoming DEI Summit at the end of this month where you'll get an opportunity to hear from many experts in this space. So make sure you're registered because you do not want to miss out on this event. All right, some great thoughts and great thought leaders, and we thank them all for joining us today. Once again, if you'd like to register for NJBIA's Diversity and Inclusion Summit, you can go to njbia.org slash stronger together. We hope to see you there, and we hope to see you back here at NJBIA's Minding Business. Have a good one.